Thank you. For the last seven years, I've been researching the impact of technology on children, on parents, on family life, and on education. Really trying to understand what is it like to be a child growing up in the digital age. Are we using these tools to be our best selves? And most important, is there any psychological fallout that we need to pay attention to that is coming clearer to us now that we've had smartphones and technology for several years? It is the paradox of parenting in the digital age that these devices make it unbelievably easy and wonderful to connect to our children 24-7 and to connect to the people we love the most. Yet at the same time, these same devices that let us Skype and face chat with our babies are clearly turning our attention away from those we love the most and in fact really straining and stressing our children. In the nine years since we've had smartphones, we've developed very radical, very different cultural norms. One of the biggest ones that really stresses everybody in families out is this. At the sound of a ping or your phone vibrating in your pocket, you can be in a conversation with your child, your husband, your wife, your colleague, and we do this. We go, oop, wait a second, I just have to check. And we turn away from the person we care about. And we actually ask them to stand frozen in time and just wait for us to come back. And it's not like we're just checking to see what time it is. We are literally checking out, going into a different conversation, and it hurts, it's rude, it's frustrating, especially when it happens a lot. And on average, adults today just check 60 to 100 times a day. Now, everywhere I go around the world, adults use the language of addiction to talk about their relationships with their smartphones. I'm so addicted to this thing. Oh, it's like crack. But it is an entirely different thing. When you hand a smartphone, something we describe either jokingly or with serious concerns about being addicted to as adults to an infant. Often I heard parents say, I don't know how you changed a diaper without a smartphone. And at first I didn't understand because I thought it's not that hard. And then I realized what they were saying is when you hold a smartphone over an infant, they will calm very quickly. They love the stimulant. Smartphones are stimulants to the baby brain. And humans of all ages love a stimulant and they go into the zone. However, one of the first and most essential tools we give our babies, and we give this tool to our kids all the way till 18 they leave home, is the capacity to self-soothe, to calm down. And giving children stimulants in the car on the way to school when you change a diaper all day long is creating a very different brain in these babies. This is the greatest experiment on the developing infant brain without an ethical review board to fully understand the impact of technology on the infant brain in history. When I listen to children talk about what it's like to be a child with parents having all this tech, what struck me so profoundly was the kids of all ages, 2, 14, 22, up to 30, all used the same adjectives. They said they're angry and they're sad and they're mad and they're frustrated trying to get their parents' attention. And research suggests actually that in fact there's been a 40% spike in people feeling lonely at home and disconnected when they are trying in fact to get somebody's attention and their eyes are down in the screen. It is very important throughout the day that we protect critical moments of connection between children and families. Here are a few simple times that I think really will make a difference and help us outsmart our smartphones and be more smart about how we connect to our kids. Get up a half hour earlier, do all your email, but have the understanding you're going to be fully present to your children till they're out the door. Kids need us to be calm and focused when they are nervous and hunting for sneakers. The second thing is in the way in the car on the way to school, it's not a good time for you to be on your phone because your kids feel like they don't matter to you when you're talking to somebody else. And also, children shouldn't play Candy Crush on the way to school. Their brains need to rest, they need to deal with whatever is worrying them, and they need to prepare for school and talk to you about whatever concerns they have. When you pick your children up from school, don't be on the phone. It really hurts their feelings. When they come home from school, Many kids have the habit of coming home now, getting a snack, and instead of playing outside, they play on the screen. Actually, we know that physically and neurologically and socially, the best thing for a child to do when they come home from a day of school is to play outside, to talk to people in real life, to hang out and socialize face to face, and to play and build with manipulatives on your kitchen floor. 
when you come home from work, kids don't like it when we walk in the door and say, hold on, honey, I want to hear about your day. I just have to finish this call. So stand outside, finish your call, but walk in the door and connect to those you love. And adults have a new habit, too. We walk in the house and we say, hi, everyone, I'm just going to check my email. And the research suggests that on average we disappear anywhere between 25 minutes to two hours when we check our email. The last thing, of course, is bedtime and bath time. These are important transitions in the lives of children, whether they are four or 14. They want us to say good night. They want us to beam on them. And somehow saying good night, honey, sweet dreams when we are texting does not have the same reassuring magical tone of voice. We can't let new apps, new games, it's the biggest growing market, one of the biggest growing markets in the tech industry, are devices for infants and toddlers. We can't let all these devices delete old truths. Children thrive in families that do the hard work of connecting to them in real life. Thank you.